Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, we're going to talk about uh, how to use the second derivative in calculus to describe whether a function is concave up or concave down. We're going to take a very intuitive approach and do a very simple example. So what does it mean for a function to be concave up? So if it looks like this, we say it's concave up. Okay, concave up. And if it looks like this, we say it's concave down. Okay, concave down. So let's investigate how we can use calculus to describe concave up and concave down. Okay, so let's see. Let's look at the slopes of the tangent lines, right? Because that's what we do in calculus, we take derivatives. So we have a function, so here's the slope of the tangent line. So at this particular point, the slope um, is negative. Right? Okay, what about here? Well, it looks like the slope is still negative. Then here, it's not as steep though, right? It's, it's negative, but not as steep. Here, it's zero. Here, it's positive. And here, it's even bigger, because it's steeper, right? So it looks like the slopes go from negative to zero to positive. From negative to zero to positive. And if you look at it very carefully, this is like, maybe this is negative 10, I'm just making it up then this is not as steep, so that might be negative four. This would be zero, maybe this is two. This is more steep, it's a bigger number, so like five. So it looks like the slopes are increasing. So the slopes are increasing. So the slopes, they're going from negative to zero to positive. So the slopes are increasing. The slopes are increasing. But what are the slopes? The slopes are the values of the first derivative. So the first derivative is increasing. So if the first derivative is increasing, that means its derivative is positive. Right? Remember, if a function is increasing, it has a positive derivative. So the derivative of the derivative is positive. So the second derivative is positive. Boom. So if it's concave up on an interval, the second derivative is positive. So if you have a function that's concave up on an, on an interval, the second derivative is positive. We do that again. Slope is negative, zero, positive. So the slopes are increasing. Slopes are increasing. The values of the slopes are the values of the first derivative. That means the first derivative is increasing, so its derivative is positive. Remember, if a function is increasing, its derivative is positive. Therefore, the derivative of the derivative is positive. So concave up, positive. Really easy to memorize it, right? Concave up, positive, first der positive second derivative. Concave up, positive, second derivative. What about here? Here we have a positive slope. Here we have a slope of zero. Here we have a negative slope. So it looks like the slopes are going from positive to zero to negative. So the slopes are decreasing. So slopes are decreasing. Okay, the slopes are decreasing. The values of the slopes are the values of the first derivative. That means that the first derivative is decreasing. First derivative is decreasing. If you have a function that's decreasing on an interval, that means its derivative is negative. So this function is decreasing, so its derivative is negative. So the derivative of the derivative is negative. So concave down means you have a negative second derivative. Concave down means you have a negative second derivative on an interval, on an interval. Okay, so concave up, second derivative is positive. Concave down, second derivative is negative. Let's go ahead and do a really, really, really simple example. I'm just gonna make one up and we'll do it. I'm trying to think of like the easiest possible example in the world. Oh, by the way, if you have a point, if you have a point on the graph where the function changes from concave down to up or up to down, it's called an inflection point. So look, it's calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. At some point here, at some point here, it will change to concave up. Where's that point? I have no idea, but it's somewhere there, right? So concave down, concave up, so it will change. That's called an IP, inflection point, inflection point. Let me write that down. It's called an inflection, so you know how to spell it. So it's an ordered pair. It's an X comma Y, hence the word point. So whenever you're doing homework or just doing this for fun, it's always an ordered pair for inflection point. All right, so positive second derivative, concave up. Negative second derivative, concave down. You have a point on the graph where the concavity, there's a fun word, where the concavity changes, it's called an inflection point. All right, let's do a simple, simple, simple example. EX means example. Let's do f of x. This one should be pretty easy, I think. Um, f of x equals x cubed. Uh, yeah, x cubed. Oh, minus 8. Why not? Let's make it a little bit harder. It's not going to affect anything. And we're going to find the intervals where it's uh, intervals. 
where, let's use bad English, intervals where, con up, down, the intervals where the function is concave up and concave down, and let's find any inflection points, so find inflection points, if any. Okay, solution. So, whenever you're looking to see where a function is concave up or concave down, and you're looking for inflection points, you have to go straight to the second derivative, okay? So you take the derivative twice. So you take the derivative once. The derivative here uses the power rule, right? So it'd be 3x squared. The derivative of negative 8 is 0, so a piece of cake. Take the derivative again. You get 6x. So you go straight to the second derivative. Don't, don't do this. You don't need to do that, right? No, no. All we care about is the second derivative, okay? And what you do now is you look to see if it's undefined. Okay, so is it undefined anywhere? Right? Is it, are there any places where it's undefined? No. Then you set it equal to zero, and then you solve for x. So divide by six, so we get zero. So what is this? Is this a critical point? No, no. Is it a critical number? No, no. That's not. It's not of that. It doesn't have a name, right? It doesn't have a name. This is a point of interest. The number of a number of interest. So we're looking for the numbers of interest. Numbers of interest. I'm just making that up are numbers where the second derivative does not make any sense or where it's equal to zero, okay? Then what you do is you take those numbers of interest and you put them on a little graph. This is called a sine diagram, okay? And you pick test points, and we're checking for concavity. So we're, we care about the sign of the second derivative. If we're doing increasing, decreasing, it's different. That's when you set the first derivative equal to zero and all that stuff. Con up, con down, you use the second derivative, okay? So let's pick a nice number less than zero. How about negative one? You plug in negative 1 into the second derivative, you get 6 times negative 1, so you get negative 6. That's less than 0, and remember, when the second derivative is less than 0, it's concave down, right? So this is con down. Let's not do that, so <laughs> put little faces there and stuff, but no. Uh, so it's con down, so con down. Then, I pick a number over here. How about, how about 1? That would be 6 times 1. That would be 6. It's positive, so it's con up. So second derivative negative, calm down, second derivative positive, calm You can pick any number you want. You could pick negative a million. So now we know the answers to con up and con down. So con up, con up would be from zero to infinity. Always use parentheses. That's the interval where it's concave up. Con down would be negative infinity to zero. So con down would be negative infinity to zero. Negative infinity to zero. That would be con down. Recap, just from the beginning. We're looking for the intervals where the function is concave up or concave down. And we're looking for the inflection point, which we have yet to do. Go straight to the second derivative. Take the second derivative, look at it. Is it undefined anywhere? Is there anywhere where it doesn't make sense? No, everything's okay, right? Set it equal to zero, solve. You get x equals zero. What is that called? It has no name. We called it a number of interest. Take your numbers of interest. What are those? Those are numbers where the second derivative is zero or where the second derivative is undefined. These numbers of interest. You plot them on a number line. You pick test points. You plug them into the second derivative. We use negative 1, we got a negative number, so it's con down. We use 1, we got a positive number, so it's con up. So it's going to be concave down from negative infinity to 0. Boom, there it is. Concave up from 0 to infinity. Boom, there it is. Look, the concavity, there's that word again. The concavity changes from down to up at x equals 0. That means that at x equals 0, we have an inflection point. To find the actual point, you go 0 and you go back to the OG funk. Go back to the OG func. OG means original o function, original function. So you take your zero and you plug it back in here. So f of zero, that's zero cubed minus eight. So that's negative eight. Is that the inflection point? No, it's not, right? The inflection point is an ordered pair. It's a point, hence the word point. So the IP would be zero, negative eight. That would be the point on the graph of this function where the concavity changes. I hope this video has made sense. Um, thanks for visiting my YouTube channel. Uh, that's it.